and time's favor. I believe that. Time's favor with God. You know, and I tell women this all the time, okay, where I go, and I mean this, is that we, we, we pray for stuff and we don't want we don't want to prepare for what we pray for. That's right. Okay, I'll prove the text that. The text says is that is that is that Peter was locked up. They were in the room praying. There came a knock at the door. Peter shows up at the door. He's knocking. A little girl goes to the door and says, who's at the door? He says, it's me, it's Peter. She goes back and tells the saints, hey, Peter's at the door. No, he ain't. We praying for him. <laughs> she goes back and says, are you sure it's you? <laughs> Yes, it's me. Open the door. She goes back and tells the saints, it's Peter. No one ain't. We praying for Peter. That's in the Bible. That's the Bible. That's the, that's the text. Yeah. See, the one well, thing is that we pray for it, but we don't expect it to happen. See, see, see? And we don't prepare ourselves for what we pray for. If I'm, if I'm a female and I want a husband, then I've got to learn how to be a wife before I get the ring. See, they mad now. They mad. They mad. They mad. They mad. They mad. If you want, I mean, and stop saying, okay, to help the women out. Stop having this dumb confession. God bless me with a man. That's too general. Because God will bless you with a man. He might be a gay man, but he's a man. See, they, they playing, Reverend. They playing. They playing. They playing. He might bless you with a man. Might be a jobless man, but he's a man. They play. They play. He might be an abusive man, but he's a man. Stop praying for a man. God, send me a husband. But before you send him, help me understand what I'm supposed to be as a wife. Prepare me for this. Prepare me for this. I was talking to my son today, he was here from Orlando, Florida, we were talking about being prepared. And, and, and so I think it's interesting that the church is the only place in the world where we'll get, we'll get an inkling of an anointing, get an inkling of a call in our life that we expect to be put up next week. Yeah. I want you to really consider this. This this make your head swim for a minute. And that, you know, I know y'all had heard from earlier today. <laughs> Be like, we say something else, I sweat for goodness, I can't take no more this. <laughs> Whatever God speaks, because God does not abide in time, God abides in eternity. So God is not bound by time, time is bound by God. Okay? So if time is bound by God, whatever God is, he's never late, it's always now. Just because you don't see him doesn't mean that he hasn't showed up. It just means that whenever he shows up, it's his now, it might be your Yeah. Okay? Now watch this. So that means that whenever God speaks something, it materializes immediately. So that's why when God said, let there be light, light showed up. Immediately. Whatever he said, let you know, let the earth did it, did it immediately. Now watch what happens. For us, the minute that he speaks something into our life, it starts to materialize in us immediately. If he says, man, I want you to preach. Preaching gets in you immediately. It doesn't mean you're supposed to preach. It just means it's in you the minute he says it. Now, how do you proof text that? It's easy. Jesus shows up to John's house, to John, after he leaves the wilderness. He shows up to John, and he says to John, and when John sees him coming, John says, Behold the Lamb of God that is slain before the foundation of the world, whose shoes are not worthy to unloose. He says that. Which means that Jesus, according to the prophetic timeline, has already been slain immediately. But watch what happens. He spends 30 years preparing for three years, the three years manifest just for three days. He was always Jesus the Christ, yes. but he had to be prepared for 30 years. Yes. But the 30 years was to prepare him to start manifesting and practicing this process for three years, yes. only to live out his real purpose and destiny for three days. Mm. <laughs> so if Jesus being God in the flesh got a word and was the word according to what John said in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God all things were made by him, there was nothing made that was made everything was made by him, so if that's the case 
And God in Jesus had to be prepared for 30 years to manifest stuff for three years to be in destiny for three days. How do you get called today and be put up tomorrow? God had to prepare Jesus for three years, for 30 years. So in other words, if I want to do stuff on an excellent level, I've got to learn that the minute that he calls me to do anything, I've got to sit and be prepared. <laughs> and then even when I'm prepared, God, I'm helping you out, Pastor. I feel so happy in here. Is that even when I'm prepared, I still have to be submitted in my preparation. God, this is getting good to me. Jesus was submitted, even though he was the Christ, submitted to his mom. Okay, wedding in Canaan, right? First miracle that Jesus did, right? First miracle that Jesus did. He goes to the wedding. Now, for those of you that are real highly in and stuff like that, he was not at the wedding in prayer. Like, thank you, Lord Jesus. He was at the wedding dancing. <laughs> okay, and I don't mess up your little theology, but I'm going to tell you why I know this. Because to be a Hebrew and go to a celebration and to not dance was considered rude. Mm. So Jesus doing electric slide. That's hard for y'all to understand. I just messed up your little spirit. <laughs> but Jesus was you know, hey, hey, hey. doing his thing. He wasn't dropping like his ball. He wasn't doing that. He wasn't backing it up and looking at me. He wasn't doing that. Jesus was doing that. Right, all right. Watch out. Mary said to him, she says, Jesus, he ran out of wine. Mm -hmm. Jesus says, what has that got to do with me? Yeah. Yeah. Mary said, okay, I'm your mom. Bump you. Whatever he said, do. That was an indication to him that you gonna say something. Mm -hmm. Whether you like it or not. All right. See? And then what happened was, Jesus said, okay, I cannot be God in the flesh and be the example for man if I disrespect my own mother. So the first wedding that came did not have anything to do with Jesus, had everything to do with Jesus obeying his mother. Yes. Yes. Jesus. Yes. So that means I don't care how anointed you are, you still have to be submitted in preparation. Why would God give you a tremendous leader like this for you just to act all willy-nilly? All right. Doing what you want to do. You can't go out and take a preaching engagement unless he says you can. Yeah. All right. Come God, God anointed me. Yeah, go ahead. I hear God. Mm -hmm. Oh, pastor saying amen. missed. That means he done had some issues. Okay, well, let me test that. Go ahead, now. Look at somebody say, be careful. Be yeah. careful. Yeah. When you think. When you think. You're more anointed. You're more than your leader. Amen. Okay, I, I, I'm already in my text. Okay. The Bible records somebody about two people by the name of Mary and Aaron. I mean, uh, Aaron and Mary. Mary, Mary uh, Aaron and Mary went to Moses and rolled up on Moses. I mean, they got ghetto with Moses. He did God like you. That's right. What? <laughs> what? 